I can determine the absolute value of numbers. What is absolute value? We've already gotten into it a little bit. It's just we never really called it absolute value. When we were learning to uh, subtract or add um, with the integers, we basically asked ourselves, which number is furthest from zero? Well, absolute value is the distance the number is from zero on the number line. So let's take a look at this. How far is 6 from 0? Well, let's go to our number line and let's go ahead and mark 6 in right here. How many spaces on the number line is this positive 6 from 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So how far is 6 from 0? It's 6 places from 0. How far is negative 3 from 0? Here's negative 3. Well, 1, 2, 3. So it's 3 places from 0. We, won't, we will not say that it's a negative distance. We're just saying how far is it. So uh, whether it's from the negative side or from the positive side, we're just measuring distance, and that's always positive. And uh, that's the reason we won't have a negative for the answer. But do you notice something? Basically... Uh, whatever the number is, that's what the answer is going to be. Just make sure that it's a positive answer. And it makes it pretty straightforward. It's not a hard concept. Um, I was able to teach you uh, to ask the question, which number is furthest from zero? And you were able to come through and say, well, you know, negative five is farther from zero than positive one is from zero. And, and we use that to our advantage when we were learning to add and subtract integers. Well, um, all we have to do to write the symbol for absolute value is put two vertical lines around a number. So instead of writing out this big long phrase of the absolute value of 6, or what is the absolute value of 6, you can literally just write these two lines around it, and it's asking you, hey, what's the absolute value of 6? How far from 0 is 6? And you could go, oh, well, it's 6. That's how you would answer it. So let's go through this. When, when you literally see a number inside these two vertical lines like this, it's not brackets. It's literally saying, how far from 0 is 10? Well, it's 10 places away. How far from 0 is negative 11? Or what is the absolute value of negative 11? It's 11. What's the absolute value of negative 324? It's 324. What's the absolute value of 22? It's 22. And what is absolute value? It just means how far from zero is the number. So it's not a difficult concept. Now, uh, if you're in class right now, uh, you need to go ahead and copy these down. If you're watching this at, at home, go ahead and copy these down and then um, hit play when you're ready and we'll check the answers. Okay, what's the absolute value of 201? 201. What's the absolute value of negative 101.5? Negative. I'm sorry. It's not going to be negative. It's a positive 101.5 because we're just measuring the distance from zero. What's the absolute value of negative 33? Positive 33 or just 33. What's the absolute value of negative 416? Positive 416, that's the distance from zero. How far is negative one-half from zero? That's what it's asking. What's the absolute value of negative one-half? It's one-half. So there you have it. I think you're ready to go and tackle uh, the additional absolute value problems that I have for you. Um, if you're at home, you don't have the, the book right there, so don't worry about it. But you've got absolute value down. If you have any questions, come and see me. Let's keep moving on, though. Uh, let's take a look at opposite numbers. Opposite numbers um, are basically just the, the opposite of any uh, number out there. If you have a positive number, the opposite is going to be its negative number. Zero is right in the middle, though, so there's no opposite number for zero. But the opposite of negative five is five. The opposite of 523 is negative 523. And here's a fun fact for you. When you add opposite numbers together, you always get zero. So here's negative 4 with its opposite of positive 4. Add them up and you get zero. You have 2,000 here with its opposite of negative 2,000. Add them up and you get zero. Same thing. You can see the other two examples I have for you there. Um, at this point, let's take a look at the story problem real quick. and Let me actually cover this up. Um, I'm not a big fan of the opposite story problems, but 
Uh, it's a concept that I need to teach you to make sure that you're comfortable with, and that's basically the idea of this. If you add the opposites together, uh, it cancels out and goes to zero, and you see that in life in, in different ways. Um, I'm saving the, the good ones for our K prep book. Um, I don't want to copy straight from them. I'm trying to give you a little bit of an extra one that we see in, in um, nature. Um, you will see a few examples that deal with chemistry, uh, hikers going up the mountain, um, also some money and, and whatnot. So I chose to make another story problem that actually has money involved. Binky earned $200 working for his grandpa. Okay, so he made $200, and then he promptly turned around and paid $200 to his brother. So he got the $200, and then he paid $200 to his brother because he had a debt. What was Binky's net gain of money? Well, net gain just means how much money did you get after all the money was taken away. A lot of times we, we talk about taxes. There's no taxes involved here. Um, he got money. How much was taken away? Well, all of it. So what I'm trying to do is to set you up of saying, okay, the money that's earned, go ahead and set it up as a positive number. The money that's going to be taken away or given away, go ahead and add that as a negative number. And then you'd be able to see what your net gain is. And with this series of problems, we're going to be using opposite numbers, and you're kind of going to be shaking your head about why we're doing this. But I just want to show this to you for the relationship. 200 plus negative 200 is $0. You can subtract it, but that's not the, the point of this type of story problem. Um, with our Common Core standards, and I know they're everybody's favorite, they're wanting our students to be able to go through there and see this relationship of adding opposite numbers. So I, I want us to, to not just rush through here and set it up as a subtraction problem. For these few problems, let's just set it up as adding opposites. And I believe I've got one more for you here. Let's go through this one. A plane flew to an elevation of 30,000 feet above sea level. Then the plane landed at an airport that was at zero feet sea level. And I believe I misspelled that, so there we go, airport. Um, what is the plane's net elevation gain? Just pause the video, hit play when you're ready, and we'll work it out. But remember, do not use subtraction. Do not use subtraction to solve this problem. I know that you can. I'm just trying to redirect your thinking. Okay, so again, the, the net gain, a net elevation gain is after you've gone up, you know, how much elevation did you retain after you've given it away, or in this case, gone back down. So, what was our highest point? It was 30,000 feet. We landed at an airport that was at zero feet sea level, which means that basically we dropped a negative 30,000 feet. That is how much we, we gave away, so to speak. This is how much we gained. 30,000 plus negative 30,000 equals zero. Now, this is a story problem, so let's go ahead and just restate the problem here. You would say the plane's net elevation gain is zero feet. The plane had a net elevation gain of zero feet. See, this was in red. You need to restate this in your answer. It's just good uh, test-taking practice no matter what class that you're in. Restate the question, and a lot of times it'll help you make sure that you didn't leave a part of the question out.